CNN chief business correspondent and early start anchor Christine Romans, who is joined by the heads of both companies. Hey, Christine. Hi. It's literally a big deal, Allison. Thank you. Joining me right now, Jeff Bukas, the chairman and CEO of Time Warner, and Randall Stevenson, the chairman and CEO of AT&T. Gentlemen, thank you. Congratulations. Morning. Thank you. Uh, let's talk, Randall. Why, why buy Time Warner? Um, it seems to us like a very natural extension of what we do. We're in a, an environment where our customers are demanding more and more video, more and more entertainment content, not only on the TV, but on the mobile device. And we have a really large customer base in, in uh, mobility and the ability to take really premium quality content to our customers in the mobile environment is huge for us. It's huge for our customers. And as we made the scan and looked for premium content to bring to our customers, this is the premium content we think uh, on the planet right now. And so the ability to do something special like this with Time Warner this is a very natural extension for us. Why sell now, Jeff? Well, it's not really selling, it's uh, joining. And right. so this is our biggest customer. It's our biggest partner. DirecTV, uh, AT&T, and then all these mobile customers that we now will have together. And what it allows us to do is just move faster with more innovation, better consumer offerings, more different price points, more effective advertising, and therefore people are going to see that more of the uh, cost of content can be borne by advertising. And the experience of watching television can be better. So what changes for the consumer, for somebody watching us right now, Randall, what changes for them with these two companies together? Oh, I think you're going to see the pace of innovation in terms of delivering meaningful premium content to the, to the customer on mobile devices. That pace of innovation is what's going to change. And, and we all are trying to innovate in this way. And, and our experience is when you're trying to do meaningful innovation and bring new product and capability to market, doing it in arm's length contracts is always really, really hard. And so you put these two companies together, and now the two companies are working together to change how the customer experiences entertainment, how the customer experiences CNN. Literally, it, that's what we think will change. The customer's demanding not only the entertainment, and not only the content, but the ability to integrate social doing clipping and posting and in social interaction uh, with their content. So these are the kind of things we really want to move fast. Talk with. to me more about how you see the future audience consuming this stuff. You know, you've got this young uh, millennial who, do, in, in many cases, they don't want to ever have a, a, a cable package, right? They're viewing this content differently. How does this deal see that or feed that? So the millennials, and in, in fact, the, our customer base in general, is not consuming less content. Our, our, uh, our customers are consuming more premium content today than they've ever consumed, but they're consuming it in different places. They're not consuming it just on the television in their living room. They're consuming it now on their tablet. They're consuming it on the mobile device, on the go, and they're consuming it everywhere. And it's, it's really stark if you look at the, the amount of volumes, how they're increasing to, uh, traffic going to these mobile devices right. that's video driven. And so we're, we see that continuing, but we see that if we can actually innovate and then curate the content differently and bring to the customer differently, we actually think this doesn't slow down, this accelerates. And th this is the really important thing here because we're really excited and, and curate about the content differently as and bring to the customer differently. We actually think the devices continues to grow. It gives us more and more incentive to invest more and more in infrastructure and innovate in infrastructure. This idea of 5G technology. What is that? It's the next generation of mobile technology. So think about the fastest uh, internet speed you get from the cable company is a gig, right? But we, you can buy a gig of speed. 5G will allow us to provide a gig of speed to you wirelessly. And as we innovate this kind of content, having a one gig wireless network so our customers now can, can stream any kind of content, any kind of video anywhere, ultimately, we think we'll be competing head to head with the cable companies with a wireless offer. We can hit those kind of price points, combine it with this kind of content. We think this is exciting. You know, we're talking about that, that cable free customer, or the customer who wants to be cable free. And Time Warner, well, you and I have talked about some of the things that Time Warner has already been doing mm -hmm. to sort of see this film struck, for example. You know, yeah. talk to me a little yeah. bit about how this deal, um, how this deal fits into that. Well, we've had a progression for years. We wanted to have more video on demand. That was launched at HBO about 15 years ago. 
This doesn't slow down. This accelerates. And this is a really important thing here because well, we've had a progression of year. We wanted to have more video on demand. And that was launched at age four about 15 years ago. This doesn't slow down. This accelerates. And this is a really important thing here because well, we've had a progression of year. We wanted to have more video on demand. And that was launched at age four about 15 years ago. This doesn't slow down. This accelerates. And this is a really important thing here because. Well, we've had a progression of year and we are basically doing more choices, more experiments. And we think this will, if consumers like the kind of packages and more competition leads to more, it leads to lower prices, it leads to happier consumers, and it tells us where to go. So eight weeks ago, you first met in this building to, dis to start kind of talking about this. That's pretty quick for such a, a, a big merger. Tell me a little bit about the timing here, because we are in the midst of what is, I think, the most populist presidential election in modern history where, you know, big is bad. And um, I'm wondering if, if, if that timing play had any effect on you guys. No, it had no yeah. effect on it. I, uh, I came to see Jeff because our, our businesses obviously right. do a lot, of, a lot together and, and we buy a lot of Time Warner content. And so we see each other regularly. We get together regularly and uh, came by to see Jeff. We had lunch. And as we began to talk, me about where I saw the world of distribution going, mm -hmm. 5G that we've mm -hmm. spoken of here this morning, and, and where he saw the, the, the world of content and premium content moving, and, and we just <laughs> really came to a, an agreement that these things are converging, and they're going to confer, converge very, very quickly. Just think how, I mean, a, a movie studio and a phone company, I mean, you think about how quickly things have really changed in terms of both of your both of your businesses. I'm wondering about the regulatory scrutiny. I mean, you look at the front pages of the papers today and, you know, immediate opposition is almost in every single headline or first paragraph. Um, we've heard folks on the campaign trail talking about Hillary Clinton has said that she will, you know, her, her spokesman said that they will, you know, give it scrutiny uh, right. if, if she is president. Donald Trump says that shouldn't be allowed to happen. Um, are, and there will be hearings in Congress, no question. Are you worried about the regulatory scrutiny at all? Well, obviously, we're uh, very attentive to it. We, we've announced a lot of big deals, and this, this is uh, not too much different than what we've seen in the past. This deal is unique, though, mm -hmm. from any deal that we've ever done of any size. And in fact, it's, it's unique in this regard. This is a true vertical integration of two companies. Explain what that means. It means, it means it's not as if yeah. two companies do the same thing already. Yeah, so think about uh, AT&T when we... Uh, tried to buy T-Mobile. That was right. a horizontal integration. That was a concern that the government had, is that a competitor was viewed to be taken out of the market. This transaction is not horizontal. We, we don't compete. In fact, it's vertical. Jeff is a supplier to right. AT&T. His content is, is part of our package we buy. Right. Vertical integrations have a very standard review in the regulatory process. And uh, there's, not a, there's not a competitor being taken out. And in fact, you're hard pressed to find in either one of our industries a time when a vertical integration was shot down by regulators. Generally what happens is where the regulators have concerns with a, a merger like this, they'll put conditions on it and impose conditions to help remedy the concerns that they may have. And you're ready for that? Yeah, we're, we're, for that. we're ready for a review. We, we expect it to be a vigorous review. Like you said, we're sure that we'll get a chance to visit with Congress and tell our story there. But uh, we feel like the, the information and the data will drive this and the law will drive this. This has been compared, some have been raising the Comcast NBC merger and saying, you know, that there was some, you know, it's been sued for failing to keep some promises that it had made under that deal. Do you, does that hurt you? Does some of the, the, the uh, armchair quarterbacking after that deal, does it hurt you here at all? No, I mean, the, when the, the regulators looked at Comcast NBCU, the biggest concerns at that time, there were two of them, right? Net neutrality, need to ensure that they protected net neutrality right. and over the top video. And I think if you look at this transaction six years after that, the net neutrality debate, I think it's over. I think uh, the, the, uh, the case was settled by the circuit court, and uh, I think net neutrality is behind us. Over the top, I think Netflix is somehow going to make it. I think they're going to pull through. I think they're going to make it, right? Let me ask you about CNN and its in independence um, here, because CNN is just one of the many, many name brands that are uh, in, in the Time Warner um, stable. But you have said that... AT&T will not be reaching into how CNN does its business or tells its stories. I, uh, I watch how Jeff manages this business today, and I, I think it's a model for how we want to manage it in the future. And look, I, I think of a brand like CNN, and the key variable of your brand is your independence. And when people watch CNN, are they getting an independent assessment and reporting of the news? The last thing we want to do as AT&T is in any way taint that in the slightest bit. 
And you're sure they, they understand the separation of, of yeah. all that? <clears throat> you know, you've been at CNN for many years, and it's been owned by Time Warner. Has it been interfered with? I think no. No. And why? There are two things. People watch news channels if they trust them to be independent, honest, and objective. That's always the challenge. And when you're looking for the best journalists in the world, you would only work at a news channel that lived up to that standard. What changes for the Time Warner brand? You stay on for how long? Well, at least a few years after the club. We'll, we'll, all, we'll all do it as long as we're useful for the new company. This is and great. It's the uh, first time I've heard you say a few years. This is a really big moment. <laughs> and you have the tape. You can always roll the tape. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a year to get to the... To the, get to the close, and then uh, we need some period of time. But we have some tremendous executives in both of our companies. And you think that are going to be, you know, we, we're always trying to build the next generation. You're trying to build the next generation. So you keep Time Warner sort of operating those brands as they are now, with the leadership they have now. Yes, absolutely. And move forward. At what point, um, you know, they operate as two sort of separate companies, AT and T and Time Warner. Yeah, I mean, you should think of Time Warner becoming a wholly owned subsidiary of AT and T. And uh, look, I mean, Jeff has built an amazing company over here with some amazing brands. And I don't envision us stepping in here and like, we're going to fix this. I mean, this is a well-run company. I, I said at the very beginning, I think this is the pr uh, premium content brand company in the world. So I don't envision us changing a lot with it. What we do want to figure out, and this will be the management art that we have to figure out, and that is how do we begin to think differently about curating this content and, yeah. and formatting this content in new ways that we can get it to our customers in different ways and different formats and, and getting that seamlessly working across the two companies, that will be the management art we have to figure so out. So tell me again, I mean, what we're talking about here is how, what, what content's going to look like in five years and how together you guys can, can harness it and get it um, um, to people. But for consumers, you know, they want to know what's going to change for them. Their, their bills, you know, their, their phone bills, their, their uh, cable bills. What is the biggest thing that they'll notice differently, you think? They're going to have more choices of different channel packages. If they want a big package of a lot of channels on their big screen TVs and they can watch the show and walk out the house with a tablet and have seamless connection, or maybe they don't want that. Maybe they've got, it's a young couple that wants to use mobile devices to watch. Maybe they don't want the full package of channels. There'll be more choice. I think better prices for consumers. There'll you be, think better prices for consumers? Yes. Uh, more competition usually leads to more uh, price reductions. I'll give you a classic example of this. You'll see this actually next month. And that is one thing we've been working on since we closed on the DirecTV acquisition is a purely over-the-top yeah. content package. Right. We're calling it DirecTV Now. Right. This is a mobile-centric, purely over-the-top uh, a package that's going to our consumers. This is going to be a radically lower price point than what the consumer is expecting or has, has typically paid. And it's going to be 100 plus channels. We're not talking channels that right, nobody right, watches. Right. This is 100 plus premium channels. All of this content oh, will be on there. ESPN, the Disney content. This is a very, very different experience. Mobile centric. It's designed for the tablet and the smartphone. Now think about having an anchor tenant like Time Warner whose content is in here, and HBO and that content, and how you can begin to integrate social into this, and social interaction, and, and can we clip the content and send it to friends and, and interact with our friends on this. These are the kind of things that we think are going to iterate much, much faster and change how the customer experiences content. Jeff, let me ask you about your legacy at this company. I mean, um, you've, I mean, you've been, what, what are your thoughts, I guess? Well, I think it's our company. It's, it's you're years, in right? it, too. Yeah. Um, Look, w this company invented the magazine. It invented right. uh, satellite delivered, non-app supported TV at HBO. It invented 24-hour news at CNN. And so we're very proud of the mission of informing people, of telling authentic stories. And this will help us to do even more investment, even more variety, and keep evolving the distribution system. That's what this is about, is making sure that the breakthrough content that we're seeing explosion, not just in mm -hmm. our company, but in all the television companies. We need to get this out across the world in a way that harnesses the 21st century. Later in political anger of Time Warner News, delivery, Errol, VOD. Errol, political reporter. There's so much pressure. The Washington Post, Philip Bumpen, CNN, <laughs> political analyst, and Washington what bureau, bureau chief watch? for the Daily Beast, Jackie. And more hours in the day to watch it. Yeah, that's right. Jeff Lucas, Randall Stevenson, thank you gentlemen so much. Thank you so much, Christine. Chris?
All right, great interview, Christine. Thank you very much. So what needs to happen for this ATT Time Warner deal to come to fruition? And what's the plus minus for you? Up next, our media experts will take you through the deal. Next.